Hey there, welcome back. And I swear I haven't been wearing this shirt continually since the last time you saw me in the previous video. Uh, this video is entitled, Is That Kilt Safe to Bring Into My House? And um, this, it's something you should really think about when you order, you buy something, you use kilt, eBay, Etsy, anywhere else through the mail, is, is it contaminated? Are there moths in there? So a uh, fellow had asked about, um, he bought the thing, he'd asked about my restoring it, he sent me the pictures, and we both kind of agreed that it's it's not going to be top drawer. It'll be good and it'll be good, you know. But it's not going to be top drawer. And he decided he says he just donate it to me and I'll make sure it finds a good home. So they're going to, when time allows, I'm going to restore this, and then talk to the Royal Highland Fusiliers of Canada, formerly the Highland Light Infantry of Canada, whose tartan this is HLI Mackenzie Number no. Two A, and uh, see if we can pass it on to their cadet corps. But in the meantime, as I said, you know. Clothes moths, and I talk about them on, on my website. I, I flinch because they can really, really, really mess up your life if you've got a lot of wool in the house, wool and silk and such like that. So I was about to open the parcel because I'm going to use this part of this kilt for a, a teaching moment for the, the other HLI kilt, the one with the interesting pleating pattern. And I thought, what's waiting? Are there any passengers outside? So I brought it outside. I carefully opened it. So yeah, you, you get yourself a kilt through the mail. You might really want to think about this. So I, I didn't, this hasn't even been, un, this unwrapped kilt has not been indoors. So I've laid it out and what I'm doing, I'm going through every pleat and I'm looking for moth eggs, I'm looking for pupa, I'm looking for moth casings, sort of a web kind of silk thing, right? And um, I've already been through it, so you don't have to see me go through the whole thing. So I investigated both sides, right? Both sets of pleats, and this is, I can't quite make out the entire label, but yeah, kilt uh, number 2A, HLI, other ranks except 5th Battalion, 4th Battalion, I don't know, somebody's battalion, the, the notional measurements, um, William Gordon and Sons, Glasgow, and look at that, it was made the year, it was the year, month of the year I was born, July 1959, so it shows you how long a kilt can last. This is the older generation of army, of of War Department kilt cloth. It's the generation prior to that stuff that I've been that I'm working with right now. So yeah, so I've done the same thing. I've gone through every pleat, as I said, looking for for passengers. And then the next thing, and you might want to come forward just a bit, is frankly I popped the lining. Because this lining, fortunately it's all natural thread and I can do this. And I'm going to carefully go through that too. Frankly, what I'm going to do, because I have to get back to work on that other kilt, it's what passes for hot weather. It is pretty, it is pretty warm here. But I'm going to hang this up on the line, and I'm going to leave it in to get a full dose of sunlight for a day or two. Because apparently, moths don't like that. I've also been told you can throw, you can throw wool into the dryer, the hot setting, for 20 minutes, and they won't like that either. You can run an iron over it. They definitely don't like that. Um, but, but yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to leave it out in the sun for a couple of days. Now, if you take a look here, you see this canvas and how it's been, um, tacked in place, sort of a running stitch top and bottom, and then just a plain running stitch in the middle. That's pretty much the industry standard for army kilts from antiquity to maybe even the present day, because I haven't, uh, I haven't worked on any army kilts made in the last five or six years. But this is a short piece of canvas that goes from this buckle and ends here. And because, yeah, okay, so it connects the buckles, but it doesn't connect to the inside apron. So it, it's, it's, it's a nice attempt. We're gonna give them E for effort. Although to be fair to them, they had no idea. The person that made this kilt had absolutely had no idea that 63 years later the thing would be pretty much wearable. I mean this would be this would be fine if some donkey hadn't put a buttonhole in the apron, right? The best we can do is a is a visible but neatly done patch. So yeah, so you fix that in your brain in your in your memory, that rudimentary bit of canvas and you can compare that to the canvas which you're going to see going and which you've seen in my earlier videos, but you're also going to see in uh, the next video I shoot about the kilt with the interesting pleat pattern. So there we are. Stay cool, stay frosty. Talk to you soon.